Okay. Now, so now we are discussing about quasi random sampling. So what do you mean by the word quasi? Quasi means uh, like resembling. Okay. okay, something which looks like, but not exactly the same. So, you know, like random sampling we have already discussed. Now we are discussing about quasi random sampling, which are like random sampling, but not exactly the random sampling. Okay, so uh, that means they may have some traits of random sampling, but not exactly the random sampling. So what is like they, there are three main methods of quasi random sampling and they are systematic sampling, stratified sampling, multi-state sampling. Let's now understand about them. Systematic sampling is a sampling method which works by selecting every nth item after a random start. That means you start randomly anytime you start your sampling. But what happened? You select every nth item after a random start. That means you go on just you take some, it's like putting some interval, some gap. Understood? Okay. So like uh, what happens? Systematic sampling is a sampling method which works by selecting every nth item after random. I started. Now I selected some. I selected the first item. Then again I start. I selected the second item. Again I start. So it is like taking some interval, some gap. Okay. Now. Designed to give a good approximation to random sampling because it, we have some time here to uh, some interval. We are taking some break, which gives us uh, when you take break, there's more productivity, correct? The gap between every nth item is known as sampling interval, as I told you. Now, advantages is it is easy to select the sample items given a sampling frame because, uh, you know, uh, we are not do we are not doing the sampling for the sake of sampling, but we are taking some uh, interval, some gap, some pause, some break and we are doing it. So it becomes very easy for us to select the sample items uh, given a sampling frame and reasonably random, providing that there is no pattern to the distribution of items. That means you are just taking breaks and then selecting an item, then taking some break, then selecting. You are doing it randomly, not in some pattern. Am I right? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. The selection is random, see. You don't know what is the outcome going to be. That's what I said. Quasi random sampling means it will have the characteristics of random sampling, but not, not exactly random sampling. Some changes to random sampling. So you are taking breaks, okay, and you are picking out your samples. But those samples, what you are picking, you don't know what you are going to pick. That is again what? Random, correct? Now. Disadvantages of systematic sampling, it requires a sampling frame, it requires access to whole population. If there is a regular pattern to distribution of items, the sample may be biased. Okay, uh, so that's the reason why we say it is a it, it is random sampling. There is no uh, like uh, pattern to do this. We are doing it like nth. We did not say that we are going to say 10th item, 20th item. It can be first item. It can be fifth item. It can be uh, seventh item. We'll take a break after we are, there's no set pattern. Actually, when you are going to take break, the, the breaks what you're taking is like random. The intervals what you're having is random. That's why they said nth. It may be expensive to select the required sample every nth item. Now, stratified sampling. So with the name itself, you can understand start strata. That means stratified sampling is a method of sampling which involves dividing the population into strata or categories. For example, if I have to uh, sample, if I have to collect samples of businesses in Hyderabad, there are various businesses in Hyderabad. There are companies, there are partnership firms, First, I'll write them without this uh, like uh, categories. There are partnership firms. There are sole trading firms. OK, so now you know these are the types of businesses. Am I right? Now what I'll do is I'll categorize my sampling. Whatever the samples I will collect, I'll categorize them. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. So I had the whole population of different types of businesses which I have divided into certain categories. OK, so stratified sampling is a method of sampling which involves dividing population into strata or categories. Random samples are then taken from each stratum or category. Then I'll collect 
Then what I'll do, I'll pick one company out of this. Pick one firm, pick one uh, sole trading. So this, what I'm picking, I don't know what I'm picking. That is random. Understand? That's what. Yes. First, dividing samples into categories and picking your samples out of that. And the sample which you're picking, you're not aware of what you're picking. That's what, that has the random, that has the characteristics of a random sampling. Now, advantages, see, every, every, whenever I'm passing through, I'm seeing some refinement in my sampling. So samples are representative as all important groups will have elements in the final sample. So like final sample, whatever it would be, will be having all the categories of businesses, what I'm seeing here, okay? So samples are represent, so this represents company sample, partnership firm sample, sole trading firm sample. Then I'll pick my, out of this sample, one more sample I'll be having. These are the sampling, samples of different businesses and then one, then I'll be picking out the businesses. So the sample structure reflects the population as the same proportion of individuals should be chosen from each strata. Each stratum is represented by a randomly chosen sample. Increased precision, of course, more precise. This is more precise now. Disadvantages, prior knowledge required of each item in population. That means you should have knowledge beforehand what you're doing and which area you are looking into. And it's time consuming because you have to divide the population into startups. Then comes multi-stage sampling. That means you will be you will be collecting your samples in stages. Again, this is some more refinement. So multi-stage sampling is a sam sam multi-stage sampling is a probability sampling method. That means chances. Probability means chance. Yeah. What happens here, which which involves dividing the population? Suppose I have a population here into a number of subpopulations. So suppose. If I have Hyderabad as a population, I will like divide this Hyderabad into subpopulations like North Hyderabad, South Hyderabad, East Hyderabad, West Hyderabad. Can I do that? Yeah. Then I'll be selecting some areas out of this North Hyderabad, Kompali, uh, West Hyderabad, uh, Gachi Bauli, South, uh, South Hyderabad, I'll take Shamshabad, and East Hyderabad, I'll take Gad Kesar. Maybe you know about Hyderabad's areas, probably, if I'm not, or Upal, let's say. This is a familiar area. So what is what did I do? Multi-stage sampling is a probability sampling method. It's a, it, it comes under this probability sampling method, which involves dividing the population into number of subpopulations and then selecting a small sample of these subpopulations at random. Now I'm the, see, I, I just picked one area randomly. I did not sp specifically pick this for picking for picking. Am I right? I'm just randomly picking. So each subpopulation is then divided further, and then a small sample is again selected at random. Then I will divide the subpopulations sub even. I'll take this municipality area. Again, every municipality will have some uh, like areas, okay, some lanes, like uh, some like if we take some uh, this particular uh, North Hyderabad and if I take some Kompal area, there will be some kind of lanes, okay, some kind of uh, like uh, lanes or uh, by lanes or whatever. So I can again pick up some area for my uh, like study as a sample. So that means dividing the samples and again selecting the sample and again picking out randomly. This I'm doing this in one stage or multiple stages. Multiple stages. Of course, I had this entire Hyderabad. Then I divided the Hyderabad population. I had the entire Hyderabad, which is population. I divided that into areas. Again, this this was first stage. Again, what I did, I just selected some uh, like uh, area out of this. Okay, second stage. That area again, I selected some other samples. Third stage. So I'm doing this in multiple stages. So multi-stage sampling. Now, so I can do that in how many stages? In as many stages I can when uh, till I don't reach my goal. So yeah. advantages of multi-stage sampling approximates to a random sample, of course, because uh, whatever I pick, uh, I'm not sure what I'm picking, but I have confined my areas. So one thing out of that will come to some extent, I know, but not exactly that will be the one which I'll be picking. That's not sure. Okay. So it is approximating random sampling, but random sample, but not exactly random sample. That's what it is. Not every uh, this quasi sample methods are resembling random sample, uh, but they are not exactly sample uh, random sampling. It does not require a sampling frame. Suits very large populations, relatively cheaper samples may be collected quickly. Now some disadvantages it may have. It is not truly random because as as you as you know the area was finalized. Out of that, some five lines, five lanes were finalized, and one out of that can come out. 
so the sample may be biased if only a small number of regions are selected now let's go into the non random sampling this is not random sampling this is like you already know what what will be the outcome of this okay so quota sampling and cluster sampling are the methods of uh, like non random sampling so what is this quota sampling quota sampling is a method of sampling in which randomness is forfeited that means cancelled is not there in the interest of cheapness and administrative simplicity investigators are told to interview all people they meet up to a certain quota that means uh, you know like uh, a population if i take there is something called reservation correct in india yeah. it works out yeah. in various sectors so though the people who will be collecting samples will be only uh, collecting from the uh, people whom they think that they fall in that quota am i right yes sir so the, the results are clear na that means you are not randomly picking anyone out of the group you are just picking or, or else like let's say can you give some example of quota sampling uh, like like for example there is a train which is going and there are like yeah. multiple bogies in this but one bogie is fixed for the women that is quota na yes, that goes under women's quota so that is fixed that is not random it's like that that bogie is for the women's women's for the women and if you want to ask any question you'll ask to a woman only so there's no nothing like random you are, you cannot randomly speak to anyone you if you speak to any woman that woman comes under that quota am i right yeah that's what so quota sampling is that and uh, advantages of quota sampling is uh, like cheap and administratively easy large samples can be studied no sampling frame required maybe the only approach to use of course yield sufficiently accurate information for market research if you that means you are only studying about that particular category so quota sampling is very good actually for that advantages bias may exist because you are differentiating you are divide you are just looking to some particular specific sample what do you want to collect you are not looking into everyone not ultimately satisfactory because it is biased why because you are looking into one area am i right not everything that means if it is related to women's reservation women women's quota women of course that means now job uh, the, the 30% reservation should go to women women that's quota that's what so whenever you want to look into whether women are happy with that job whether women are satisfied with the reservation you will speak to women will you speak to men no there is no randomness na you are just you, you have a target group that is women and you are speaking to them about their problems issues of getting a job etc uh, excuse me who just give me a second yeah so like uh, disadvantages of quota sampling uh, so i always said you right now bias may exist not ultimately satisfactory if theoretically valid results required cannot estimate sampling error so you are looking into one quota and uh, what there can be what can be the scope of error in that it is very difficult to identify because you already are like biased you already are confirmed that you want to uh like uh, get data from a particular uh, 
what we say uh, area and you are collecting your data from that area then how will you estimate any error it's very tough to estimate am i right if you statistically do that it's very tough because everything is like in your mind what you are doing now cluster sampling so cluster sampling is a non random sampling method that involves selecting one definable subsection of population as the sample that means you already know what you are going to pick so can you give me some example of cluster sampling so suppose these are the uh, areas like i can say um, businesses can we do that uh, selecting one definable subsection of population as the sample that subsection can uh, taken to be representative of the population in question can you just give me some example of cluster sampling if you know anything yes who can you think of it with the definition Hello. Yes, Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Can you give me an example? So what we do is, suppose I am a researcher. Okay. So I have this population. I divide this population into small groups called clusters. Okay. so cluster number 1 cluster number 2 cluster number 3 cluster number 4 correct yeah so when i have a large population i divide that population into various clusters can i do that yeah and then i can randomly select one cluster out of that that means cluster in the sense these this is my population i divided this population into clusters and now i am picking my sample out of it can i do this yeah okay so that 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 was the that that is what they were saying method that involves selecting one definable subsection of the population as a sample so this was my population this is my subsection and i am picking out a sample out of this subsection is that uh, cluster sampling and can this particular subsection represent this population of course this is representing because yes. this is one amongst the population this yeah. sample is one among this population correct so can i say this this is a business this is a company yeah. this is a uh, like uh, like okay let 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 us see okay fine uh, like you will be again confused that that time i divided na okay let's say company so can i say this is public company can i say this is private company can i say this is like uh, uh, what we say uh let's say government company can i this uh, can i say this is like uh, mm, or else or else you say like you can take this okay okay i'll give you company i can say this is like uh, let's say manufacturing company can i say this is like uh, okay if i say manufacturing company okay so can i say this is car manufacturing can i say this is vaccine manufacturing can i can i say this is like uh, uh, like uh, what we say car manufacturing or can i say this is like food uh, or else let's say any manufacturing like uh, manufacturing businesses can be any business correct uh so yeah. can i say this is like uh, or else say let's say vehicle manufacturing company so car manufacturing bike manufacturing and uh, can i say uh, truck manufacturing and can i say uh, like uh, like uh, uh, cycle manufacturing can i say this can i say this or not please tell me so under that did i take all the like i took a population and i did this i did this or not yeah yeah then that's it so this is what we can do correct so did you understand the example of cluster sampling yeah uh just a second i just have a message
okay so this is what we have discussed about cluster sampling so no sampling frame required good alternative to multi stage sampling quick and cheap to administer disadvantages like potential of like there's a bias of course there's a bias because you are picking from a category and that category you already know what that category is correct because yeah. it the what you are picking is representing one one type of business okay it's not random so this is the uh, illustration to activity you have to do this activity will you do this who yeah okay yeah because uh, see i don't want to explain such simple simple activities uh, definitely we'll be doing the questions which are on tougher side we'll do that so there are two activities you have to do and then we have to discuss about the presenting information see i already told you when statistics word you listen or you hear this word called statistics uh, or if some idea someone has about this word called statistics statistics is nothing but collection of data and representation of data so whatever the uh, data you have collected you have processed it and now you have to uh, like uh, present it okay and the presentation is uh, presentation should be in such a way that whoever is uh, like uh, whoever is like seeing that uh, presentation can really understand what that presentation depicts or uh, what that presentation uh, like uh, gives you the information am i right so for small example yeah. whenever you see a cricket match you see that they show some stats uh, like either like this they just show some histogram that means the highest runs which are scored by a batsman so and they write some uh, some statement here highest runs scored so with this did you get an idea that this is the over in which the highest number of runs were scored yes that is nothing but presentation of data now so we'll see reports the purpose of a report is usually to initiate a decision or action by the readers of the report so purpose of a report is for what if you if i submit a report to you definitely the report which i have submitted to you is after doing a thorough analysis and after doing a thorough analysis a report has been given to you why the report has been given to you to just decide based upon the information what you see in the report for example <laughs> i'll just say some funny thing your teacher has conducted exams okay your teacher has conducted your exams and exams progress report has been given fine exams progress report has been given now the progress report is to be signed okay now uh, you are like uh, now you will take that uh, uh, like uh, progress report to your home and your parents see that progress report uh, like uh, and they now see the marks of uh, like marks what what you have scored in your progress report okay after seeing that marks they will decide whether to sign or not of course they have to sign that's an obligation of course they have to sign but if it is very less marks they they definitely they'll be they'll be very much reluctant to uh like uh, uh they will be very much reluctant to sign the report am i right yes yeah so based upon that report only they'll decide isn't it so yes. just a second yeah so whatever has to be done can uh, that that will be decided only after seeing the reports so the decisions or actions might be the following types control actions planning decisions so after seeing the progress report if it is 90% your father can say you that you can plan for much, for more if it is going to 70 or 60% then what they will say you have to control your action that means you have to now start studying and control this downfall will they say or say it or not that's what so reports can be routine uh, or non routine okay routine is nothing but some companies prepare budgets sales reports progress reports of the students in the school or college are routine reports what is non routine report market research report which is not happening on daily basis okay report on proposed project not happening on daily basis so the likely contents will be information what a report will have information some narration or description 
analysis and evaluation of course that report will give you some information of course because report is meant to be prepared for that purpose some narration or some description should be will be there if required and report will always be based upon some analysis then only that is thorough research that means raw data is processed and then it becomes an information correct and some evaluation they will do you know what these words mean correct yes sir and there is a like reports can be of two types so the format of report will depend on who the report is for a uh, formal request is made by a so when a formal request is made by a superior for report to be prepared such as in a formally worded memorandum or letter it is likely that the format and style of the report is expected to be formal as well of course if it is bit in the office between two people and uh, directors asking like their team or management to get some report on something it will be a formal one informal request for report can you jot down a few ideas for me about like you are asking something to your friend and you are asking him to make a report it will be more of informal teacher saying to students to collect some report uh, make some report on some facts like go for some, uh, they give some task they ask you to go and do some survey and bring a report it will be very informal one because teachers and uh, students relationship is not always formal it's like kind of informal only correct like like what students have a relation with parents same kind of relationship they have with teacher because teachers are guardians almost not legal guardians of course yeah. but to some extent they are guardians okay so short formal report uh, here it is title uh, so at the top of every report appears the title of the report of course to give an idea about what the report is all about that is nothing but its subject the report what does the report uh, like say to you or the report is on what actually on like it has been prepared for what purpose and it is intended to whom and when is the date of completion of the report and the status of the report confidential or urgent terms of reference or introduction here is laid down uh, here is laid out the scope and purpose of the report what is to be investigated what kind of information is required whether recommendations are to be made etc so this is what you will be seeing the terms of reference like for what the report is made and what is the invest investigation you are going to do some recommendations are to be made or not then procedure or method this outlines the steps taken to make an investigation collect data like how will like how do how do you make a report suppose you have been asked to make a report on something so you'll do your investigation either you'll do you'll collect your data you'll do some telephone calls some visits it depends upon what kind of uh, report you are making correct for some yeah. reports you have to visit the place isn't it so yeah. then findings what is your finding then conclusions and then recommendations see these are simple things actually not technical ones also so it can be read and then you can present data in any ways na tabular form chart charts graphs so if i make a data i can make in table na i can give some introduction i can make some, give some heading to this table i can make serial number okay then i can like uh, put to uh, i can put like suppose uh, i have some students in my class 40 students divided into into uh, groups of 10 10 students one group is called lotus one group is called rose one group is called uh, like lily one group is called jasmine can i do that like this and i can make a representation of students yeah. Yeah, i can do yeah. that and then charts and then graphs so tables are there tables are very easy ones to understand correct and yeah. uh, charts are nothing but it, it's like more of pic pictorial kind of thing you can see the chart here so these are the years and these are the maybe some revenue uh, some production or something in thousands they have put okay anything you can make it anything see this is school stuff correct and yeah. component bar charts like uh, they it is made in this way have each bar representing a class and split up into constituent parts uh, components within each bar components are always stacked in same order for example so they made this like they they have the space for this much this much is occupied let's say can we do that yeah yeah so we had the it goes till here but this much is occupied like that we can say multiple bar charts you can make multiple bar charts with different figures you put this as a hollow this one green color this one uh, like yellow color anything you can put it that means representation of a data in any way and then percentage component bar chart so you know a, a percentage will always be in form of 100 so this is 100% and this shows 
like uh, all the percentages of the data. So here it comes more than 50, uh, like uh, less than this one, whatever the bar is. All the data is less than 75 percent. Can we can we say that? Yes. And this is pie chart divided into uh, it, it is always in a circular form and this is divided into some angles uh, and the total you know circle circles the sum of the angles like the total angle in the circle is always 360 degrees correct so yes. this is percentage you can convert the percentage into angles 65 by 100 into 360 degrees or if you have angles you can convert them into percentage even suppose angle is 45 45 by 360 degrees into 100 anything is all right so this uh, shows the 65 percent of the area long term career and further study like 12 percent travel temporary jobs they have given a small data and represent in a pie chart form okay yes. so like this is scatter graph scatter graph is nothing but you are just putting some points here okay you're not you're just putting some points. They have given something weak output cost. So what we can do is in dollars, we can put the cost here. We can put output here and we can plot this. So what is your output? 10. What is your cost? 42. So where is 10? So 10 is here and exactly yeah. about 10. Can I write 42 here? Correct? Yeah. I can just plot this. No? It, it doesn't show a trend, but this is a scatter graph. Ah, now this particular straight line, if I draw and many points lie on this, this shows a trend, increasing trend, correct? Yeah. Hello. See, this side is increasing trend. This is a decreasing trend always. Yes. That is falling. Yeah. Line graphs are nothing but making lines. So this is a line. So you are plotting. So you can see here. Uh, line graphs will do a like, uh, you know, always when you make a graph, there are two things to, to understand. This is X axis. This is Y axis, correct? So yes. X axis and Y axis is what you have seen. And uh, a line equation is like Y is equal to MX plus C, correct? M is the slope. Y, C is the Y intercept, correct? Isn't it so? Yes. So what do you mean by slope and what do you mean by y intercept? See, this is the point at which this line is touching the y axis. So this is called y intercept. And this is the slope. Slope means slope is nothing but change in y axis upon change in x axis. That means if things move in X axis, things definitely move in Y axis also. Am I right? Yeah. That is what is the slope. There is a question here. A company manufactures a product. The total fixed cost are $75 and the variable cost per unit is $5. So fixed cost is $75. So you should understand that $75, this is the cost here. And uh, this is $75. So here it is always fixed. Correct? Yeah. Below 100. And see, your total cost is nothing but a combination of fixed cost and variable cost. Let me be very fine. Total cost is always fixed cost plus variable cost. Fixed cost is always fixed. It's a horizontal line. And variable cost is something which varies with the activity level. That means if you increase your production, the variable cost will vary. That means how much ever you use your air conditioner, that much ever you are... Uh, Electricity bill will increase, no? Hello? Yes, sir. See, let me be very frank. Electricity bill is not exactly the example of variable cost. It is semi-variable cost because some units of electricity are given free by the government and above that, if you use, they charge it. But variable cost is like, uh, let's say, if you are doing some production. So if you are like using the uh, like the raw material whatever you use it depends upon like you, how much ever units you are producing that much ever raw materials you are using so your cost is increasing every time or not with with one one extra extra unit if you are increasing the production that is example yeah. of variable cost or not that's the example of variable cost so if you increase ex if you make extra unit of if you make if you make extra unit of inventory or finished goods definitely 
you will be requiring more raw materials so more raw materials more variable cost correct yes because you have to buy that much raw material so so this is the fixed cost 75 and variable cost is 5 dollars per unit so it depends upon like let's uh, let us go to the next uh, like information find an expression for total cost i already explained to this one in terms of q quantity produced and uh, so they have given the uh, equation also so total cost let us see let us say that it is represented by c and fixed cost is 75 that is constant that's the reason why we keep it constant and variable cost we 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 multiply that with the number of units or quantity okay 5q plus so what happens is if the quantity is 1 so 5 dollars is your variable cost if the quantity is 10 then 50 dollars correct or wrong cool so we make we made an equation accordingly what will happen you multiply the number of units the variable cost will be increasing so let's say if you multiply the quantity you are making 100 units so it becomes 575 so you see your fixed cost was 75 and the production you are doing 100 and your cost is 575 that's it yeah so i think we are done with this chapter activity 3 pie chart you have to do after reading and spreadsheets is what i will explain you so i am leaving these activities for you why because these are simple ones see very yeah, yeah. like clearly speak uh, clearly i am saying that spreadsheets that actually okay so spreadsheet is what actually spreadsheets are basic tool of accountants to record and manipulate management information see in the sense you know you have a spreadsheet in the computer na laptop or a computer whatever you uh, see in that you can you can put some data you can change some data am i right so they have given a very simple thing it's a electronic piece of paper divided into rows and columns so spreadsheet will always be in rows and columns have you ever worked on a spreadsheet yeah like yeah. in yeah so this particular uh, like uh, uh, square box which is nothing but the uh, like uh, what we say the point where the columns and row meet is nothing but what it's a cell yes it's a cell cells can be used to hold numerical data so you put all your data in this data can be processed by defining a relationship between cells to deprive output sorry derive output i'm sorry so what kind of data you are putting it depends upon that and uh, data can be processed by defining a relationship between cells so uh, like for that definitely we should know somewhat in uh, somewhat excel uh, like uh, usage so some common applications of spreadsheets by management accountants are what preparation of management account so every management accountant uses this spreadsheet because they put all the things on data on this particular spreadsheet and they have lot of functionalities uh, based upon which if they want to do some suppose i put some data here 5 6 7 and if i want to add them i'll just put uh, click on the function add so it will add up this three point this three values correct and i can get my answer yeah so preparation of management accounts they use this they do it for budgeting or forecasting or cash flow analysis reconciliation purpose so you don't know what is cash flow analysis we will be studying in f3 book that is cash flow statements when i'll be teaching you and budgeting is nothing but i'll be teaching you how to make budgets and forecasting is what we have right now discussed something about forecasting like uh, making graphs and uh, tab table or representation those is nothing th see if you want to forecast something in the future you can do that by making some uh, pie chart or some histogram or something like that correct because you have your data and based upon that you can do you are doing your product predictions of the future account reconciliation again i'll tell you what that is revenue and cost analysis of course like you can uh, use this spreadsheets to see how much revenues you are getting uh, money is coming and how much cost you are uh, incurring or spending you can do the variance analysis see what is variance analysis suppose you have made some standard that uh you want to make 100 units you want to produce 100 units you made 120 units is that good or bad good huh? good good of course let's say i'm trying to explain a variance analysis 
variance analysis is nothing but it is it shows the difference between the standard and the actual so standard is what you fix is 100 units and actual you got is 120 units so you made more that is not bad actually let's say so the 20 units what you made is good okay so acha let's say now for example okay let let us leave that you ex expected a profit of 100 dollars you got a profit of 120 dollars good or bad good very good excellent so 20 dollars this is the standard you fixed this is the actual you got so the standard and actual difference is called variance so standards can be fixed of course and it is very important to fix standards why we fix standards is to to match it with the actuals okay so we don't have an answer for actual see actually what is going to happen no one knows but what i want to achieve i can really decide right now i can fix the standards correct so standard yeah standard so here i fix the standard of 100 dollars i wanted as profits but i got 120 dollars so 20 dollars extra what i got is good it's called favorable but if the cost i fixed is 100 dollars okay and i incurred 120 dollars cost is it favorable or not no because i wanted to do things in 100 dollars and i have incurred how much 120 so 20 dollars extra cost which i incurred is adverse what is that called adverse adverse not good okay so in case of profits more uh, profits is good in case of cost more cost is never good okay then for sorting filtering categorizing uh, big volumes of data you can use this spreadsheet okay so features and function cell consists uh, cell contents can include what anything like text values formulae so like a particular cell whatever you are going to use in spreadsheet uh, you will be having three things there text value formula text example like words abbreviations descriptions references keywords decision summary here you can see a, a spreadsheet so like here you are seeing the serial numbers here you are seeing a and b columns here you are seeing months and here you are seeing sales value okay so can i say this is a spreadsheet yeah yeah that's what it is a spreadsheet and then values you can put the numbers and formulas you can use like which formula you want a definition of a mathematical relationship see formula is nothing but example if if you want to multiply uh, like the contents in the column a and column uh, cell a and cell b you can just put this uh, function in this this one you click that and it will multiply all the values so yeah. here we have this activity you have to do see these are if uh, these are the activities which a student of any background can do there is no requirement for any explanation for that so that's the reason why i am leaving it for you but yeah. if it is a costing or any other problem of course i will do it for you uh, there i cannot uh, skip them so let's say this activity so sale tax 20% prices uh, like excluding sales tax so like there are something here 12 15.535 actually this is not that clear a5 column a and b5 so this is this is like a b okay i can say a b c yeah print is not that clear so what is happening here what formula will be typed uh, into b5 to cal calculate the sales tax very simple if you want to calculate the sales tax what will you do you will multiply the price with what sales tax percentage correct yes. correct or wrong yes hello yes. so you will take a5 into uh, the yeah what is this a5 plus b5 what plus it's multiplying na no? is like see it's simple but here what they are doing like a5 plus b5 so these are like a5 fifth cell and b5 fifth cell but nothing is there in this acha acha okay 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 so this is the price which is 
exclusive of sales tax. That is that is not having sales tax. This is the sale tax which you have to add by multiplying these numbers. Correct? Hello. Okay. So what what you have to do is first you have to calculate the amount. So twenty percent of twelve is how much? Two point four. Hello. Yes, sir. Calculate twenty percent of twelve. Twenty percent of twelve. Yeah, ten percent of twelve is one point two. Twenty percent is two point four. You okay? Yeah. Now what you are doing is A five plus B five. This and this you are adding. You are getting the value of this. So fourteen point four. That is inclusive of sales tax. So again you can do for this and this and tell me the values. And the formula for sales tax calculation is nothing but this into this. Correct? Yeah. So that will be three point one. Sorry. Three point one. Okay. Seven. Yes. Okay. This this is what you can do. So like this is what it is. So we can do this, and uh, this is the end of this chapter. So you have to do all the activities, and uh, any doubts you have in any kind of activities, you can let me know. Okay. Hello. 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 Yeah. Are you hearing who? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 So we are. Yeah. We are done with this chapter. We are done with this chapter. The next chapter is going to be this. Okay. So we are going to start this chapter in the next class. But before that, we will start the uh, chapter in F3. And the next chapter in F3 is going to be ratio analysis. Okay. Be ready for the class. Uh, next session. Okay. So before that ratio analysis, can I give you some introduction video for that ratio analysis to go through? Yeah. Okay. Sir. Hmm? So I'll give you just an introduction video. With that, you'll get some good idea about why are we doing this ratio analysis. What is the reason to do this ratio analysis? So just I'll share you an informative video, and tomorrow we'll start ratio analysis class. Okay. Okay. So one from this will be done, then one from this will be do. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who then? Tomorrow's time I'll inform in the morning uh, or within some time, and uh, let's uh, take the class tomorrow then. Okay. Hello. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Yes, Thank yes. you. Thank you.